It's not common to see professional graphics cards beating the gaming dedicated GPUs because gaming GPUs are designed to provide maximum performance in video games for comparatively less cost. This is why it's hard to find a gamer opting for a professional AMD or Nvidia GPU because they are several times more expensive but deliver less in video games. But meet the two-year-old Radeon Pro W6800X Duo GPU that has surprised everyone with its performance. The W6800X Duo was launched specifically for Mac Pro 2019 for those who wanted to push their performance in graphically intensive applications. This MPX module was definitely expensive at 5000 euros at the time of launch and the mainstream community did not take any interest in it except that now the popular overclocker Der Bauer finally got his hands on it and figured figured out a way to make it work with the standard desktop platform. The W6800X Duo has got two Navi 21 chips, but each of them is cut down to 60 compute units, making 38 40 stream processors for each die. The total memory on this dual GPU is 64GB, where each GPU can utilize 32GB of their VRAM separately. So just by the specs, this card does look like a high-end GPU, but I was not expecting it to compete with the current gen graphics cards as Der Bauer showed. With some adjustments and modifications, he was able to make it work with the Z 790 motherboard and an i9-3900K. After failing the Time Spy Extreme test a couple of times, he managed to finally go through the full benchmark process that provided these results. As you can see, the 6800X Duo was able to score 97.21 FPS, which even beat the RTX 4080 and the RX 7900 XTX by 4 and 8% respectively. Only the 4090 could beat the 6800X Duo by a big 27% margin. No real gaming tests were conducted, but I assume that the result should have been similar. But this does not mean that the W6800X Duo will make a good gaming card because it is far more expensive than the current gen GPUs and it is not easy to find or even make it work on a desktop. Not only Der Bauer had to make several modifications to power up this GPU, which most PC users won't be able to, but he also had to install Apple Boot Cam driver because the regular Radeon Adrenaline software refused to install. Now I also want to talk about the Ryzen 7950X 3D processor that has been very controversial in the past few days. There were many rumors and benchmark leaks even before the review embargo, but now there are already tons of official reviews out. Most of them were in favor of 7950X 3D, but it should be noted that installing the latest performance optimizer driver is vital. Because with this driver, it will be easier for Windows operating system to automatically allocate the cores using the 3D vCache in video games and switch to the other CCD if a faster frequency is needed. This was very much needed because the 7950X 3D used two CCDs with only one of them having the 3D vCache. This resulted in a lower turbo boost frequency that was diminishing the performance of some applications that favored high frequencies. But with this driver, you don't even need to worry about your performance in gaming or professional apps as this driver features the PPM provisioning file driver that will automatically restrict gaming on a single CCX featuring 8 cores and extra vCache for reducing the latency. In case the load is higher, the cores on the other CCX will automatically enable so that you won't have to compromise on the performance. Make sure you enable both the PPM provisioning file driver and 3D vCache performance optimizer driver if you are using any of the 7000 3D processors. Now if we take a look at the performance, it is pretty clear from all the benchmarks that 7950X 3D is on par with the i9-3900K in gaming and sometimes outperforms it but the difference is definitely not big enough except for a few games. However, what makes the 7950X 3D stand out is its power efficiency. Compared to the stock 3900K, the 7950X 3D was consuming only 56 watts on stock clock speeds, which makes it almost 2.5 times more power efficient in gaming. The result was similar in applications as well, with 3900K being about 2 times more power hungrier than the 7950X 3D. Another improvement here is the thermals. Compared to the non 3D edition, the 7950X 3D runs fairly cooler whether you consider the temperatures under full load or in gaming. Compared to almost all the Ryzen 7000 and Intel Raptor Lake CPUs, the 7950X 3D was way better in thermals. However, it should be noted that AMD has reduced the max operating temperature for the 3D edition to 89 degrees Celsius compared to 95 degrees on the non 3D edition. 
In conclusion, the 7950X 3D is definitely a good CPU for both gaming and productivity, but it might not be ideal for everyone because of its hefty price tag of $700. I believe that 7800X 3D will be a much more affordable choice for high-end gaming enthusiasts because you will essentially get the same or even better performance for $250 less. The 7950X 3D should be available for purchase soon and if you want to buy it, you can use my affiliate link in the description. Also, let me know if you believe that 7950X 3D is a better buy over the 3900K or do you think that it is better to go with the cheaper 7800X 3D which is coming in April. Subscribe if you don't want to miss any latest PC hardware stories like this and I will see you in the next one.